What's happening, Ed? Um, so Downing Street are going to unveil a plan prioritising social housing or spaces in social housing and giving it to British people as opposed to not British people. That's largely it. About damn time. About damn time. Fucking um, amen, brother. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not so sure about this one. <laughs> don't love that. Mm-mm. I'm doing bad facial expressions, so I can't. <laughs> Olga was shaking her head just for the listeners. Yeah, um, it seems the there's, there's two facets to it, to this, isn't there? There's like the racist element of this, and mm. also the impracticality of this in terms of the vast majority of people who get social housing are British, so it actually doesn't really. There's no this this isn't a problem, and this isn't the solution. But if you want to have more British homes for more British families anyway, just build some fucking houses. Equally, I think. That's, yeah. He's done it in a sentence. Have I eliminated yeah, the right. rest of the conversation? <laughs> no, I, look, you're right. It's, it's kind of like a, a red herring because it's already incredibly difficult if you're, if you're not a UK citizen or have settled status. Like, you, in fact... Um, I think the subtext of this, right, he's talking about people on like small boats, right? He's talking about refugees, etc. They're not allowed to, to 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 claim housing benefit. They're not allowed to 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 live in um so, social housing until at least until their claim is processed. You know, they're, they're literally their access to benefits is restricted for for time periods after arriving in the country. It's totally disingenuous to suggest that they could. And again, you're right to suggest that. Ah, oh, who is responsible for the housing crisis in mm. Britain? The most vulnerable people, yeah, <laughs> who were haven't who arrived <laughs> yesterday on yep. a dinghy, they're responsible. Yeah, they're they've taken your house already. Yeah, it's um, it's pretty stagnant. It's also as well. I think it should be mentioned about like normalize normalizing this sort of discourse and how much this kind of anti-immigration, anti-refugee rhetoric mm. has become part of the political mainstream in the past decade. If that it normalizes it, and it's not going to help the Tories out, it's going to help out the further right parties because it's going to legitimize the stuff that the conservatives would never say now sounds less atrocious less abhorrent because of um, it flatters them by comparison because you could, could get someone to stand up and saying well we should just shoot them all and that sounds less abhorrent because of the rhetoric like this that they're that the conservatives are bringing into the political mainstream that's one of the things isn't it with this uh quite ugly rhetoric is that you can never you can never be racist enough to feed that dragon. Like it will, it will always consume you in the end. If you, if you, if you play to those nativist tendencies, there eventually comes a point where you will know you, you will, you will reach your red line faster than the racists will. You will never be able to fully, to fully appease them, to fully make them happy. And if you just play that game, rather than putting forward a vision, like a positive vision, an alternative vision for Britain, um, <coughs> one in which, let's say. There are hundreds of thousands of houses being built every year, or to, or to reject and actually dismantle the false dichotomy between, um, it's you or me, buddy. What only one of us gets a house, mm-hmm. you know. And and if you don't put your hand up and do the brave thing of saying, how about both of you get a house? If you don't if you don't do that, um, then you then you sort of fall into this populist right nativist. Well, actually, I think you probably call this ethno nationalist, right? This yeah, fucking, sure. it's like. It's like British jobs for British people, local jobs for local people. Um, it's a nonsensical. Like, it doesn't change anything. Nothing is being changed. It's just a, a, a sort of gimmicky this is name. Good. Yeah. Because, okay, and then I am might be, I'm not super informed on this, but I volunteer with an incredible organization called the Islington Center for Refugees and Migrants. And then, honestly, spending one day there, you realize what asylum seekers have to go through. And at no point are their systems like, encroaching on the housing systems for british people so this is like they're they're happening in parallel so this idea that they're like competing for the same housing is bizarre and untrue but also the standards for living for asylum seekers that are so much lower they are horrific like people people are forced to live in like hotel rooms that are covered in black mold like it is awful and so any any narrative that sort of reinforces the stereotype that it's somehow like easy and freeloading to be a refugee or an asylum seeker it is so upsetting sorry i don't have a punchline no <laughs> no no that's great tell can you tell us more about um what some of those circumstances or people they obviously don't have to like fucking 
dox the people that you've worked with but like could you tell you mentioned that parallel world could you tell yeah. us tell us a bit more about that so i guess and again i'm like i'm just a volunteer i have no legal background and i'm i don't want to like name things or programs but basically mm. you arrive you can wait up to a year once you arrive to just get the interview and in that time up to that year you're not allowed to work so like this idea that maybe you're lazy or don't want to work that's just that is just false because it is illegal for you to work. And then um, after a year, you might get that interview and then you can work, uh, wait up to a year for a decision on that interview. So that's two years where you are not you don't have like legal status or anything. And that's and that in itself is nerve wracking. And you're living in like a hotel room that is designated to you by a governmental organization that truly doesn't give a shit about you. Mm. And, and like any living living standards that are around it, it's extremely difficult for you to seek like legal action or like sort of prove your rights to like good housing because a lot of the time maybe you don't speak the language or you don't have access to lawyers or those lawyers cost money and there's very few that do it pro bono or maybe like four hours a week once a week. So it's it's a, it's an incredibly difficult Kafka-esque maze to navigate. And again, it's like whenever you read something like this, it is just so upsetting for, for them to be portrayed as people who are freeloading. Mm. Sorry, this is really, really dark. But yeah, no, 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 it's really interesting. And also, once okay, and then I am myself as I, I'm an Im immigrant, and I am a British person. But like, whenever you read stuff like that, it's like once, once they do go through the system and they get refugee status, or they get a leave to remain, or they get a British passport, then they are in the same system competing for British housing. But it is they had become British people, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so it's either they're not competing for the same thing, or once they are, they are British people, so they are entitled to those homes, right? I'm gonna suggest. That when Rishi Sunak says British workers, mm. he may not mean all British workers. What? What? That's it. Isn't Could it? you be more specific? Oh, old oh boy, I think you know. <laughs> Is it the same? You way? know damn well what I mean. The same way with when the way, when I interviewed the far right people on um, Remembrance Day, they kept talking about we are here, the English. Yeah, are here. Is is it? Is a substitute word for white people? I said it. Yeah, I think that, that it it's it's not quite dog whistle, right? Because it's way more blatant. I think. Do you think? Yeah, I don't think it's dog whistle. I think. Because I, th I think. <laughs> I think as as a substitute for dog whistle, <laughs> a foghorn, explicitly, <laughs> explicitly racist. Yeah. Right? <laughs> no, it, I I don't. When you say like British homes for British people, I think, and there are people, and I'm not going to name names, but there are people in the national media who have made a talking point of this recently talking about immigration and the and the proportion of people in london for example who live in um who live in social housing and essentially willfully misinterpreting um white british as being the only the figure that actually is british and like the other derivations ethnic derivations of let's say black british asian british did not including those when talking mm -hmm. about the proportion of british people that own social housing and uh, live in social housing in london for example and it's this idea that basically, unless you're white, you can't be British, mm. which is obviously morally problematic. Shall we say at a minimum? <laughs> shall we? Shall we say? <laughs> shall we say intellectually incoherent? Yep. I don't know. I just. It's like I don't think you have to be a genius to see that. Or maybe. maybe or maybe that's the point. Maybe that's because the people it's, it's it, you know, that you're catering to with a political message like that, you really are catering to people who are like, yeah, yeah, why only white people are British? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just the, it's so blatant now of just it's also they're not, there's no problem to be fixed. That's also what underlines this. It's like there's a housing crisis. Yeah, that's almost a separate issue to this. As it's not like pe people who aren't British born do not dominate the social housing thing. So this changes nothing. Because there's nothing, there's, this isn't a remedy because there's nothing to be fixed, if that makes sense. He's, by talking about it like this, he makes it sound like there's a bounty of British homes <laughs> that, that, that like, <laughs> are able to be handed out yeah, yeah, yeah. and that the order in which they're handed out is wrong. I think you should, you should cross out the British bit on both sides and it should just be homes for workers. That would be a, that would be a totally adequate political, political Too socialist. Position. Bloody socialist. You know yes, yeah, so, sorry. You forgot to introduce the ethno-nationalist <laughs> part to this policy, Ed. We'll never do that. <laughs> But also workers is a loaded word to use as well, isn't mm. it? It's not people. It's workers. Yeah, and it's bloody freeloaders. Awful. Yeah, God. I think they're... 
I tell you what, I think I'm, I've had it up the year with this government. <laughs> <laughs> I think they might be a nasty bunch. <laughs> I'm this close to starting a podcast, okay? <laughs> <laughs>